Hello beautiful humans. I welcome all of you who are with me live. I welcome all of you who are tuning in at a later time. Mm, I was just tuning in and feeling into how can I best share with you the depth that I feel, the love that I feel, the expansion that I'm experiencing right now. And uh, hello beautiful ones, welcome. Uh, and I have just emerged from a whole week of celebrating my birthday. <laughs> and um, it's been really extraordinary time and um, I am feeling so full. You know, when I was younger, I uh, tend to, I had quite a few times in my life when I would end up doing things and being in environments way before I was ready for it. So I was always the youngest, I was the youngest of all siblings, I was the youngest uh, in different environments, like in different, like when I went to, to play tennis and when I did different sports and different activities, I was so often the youngest, mostly all the time the youngest. When I was a lawyer, and uh, working with lawyers and bankers who were all in their mid 40s and 50s, I was like in my early 20s, I was the youngest. And even when I started my path as a yogi and meditator, I was again the youngest. And I was always feeling like, okay, when once I arrive to my mid 30s, then I will have things more clear about this life, <laughs> about all this confusion. And I must say that I, I think I had a good intuition. Yeah. So now I'm in my mid-30s, I just turned 36, and I am more me than I've ever been. And I'm more settled in myself than I've ever been, and I am more at ease with myself, with my life, than I've ever been. And um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that I have it all figured out. I, I hope I will never ever say that. I don't think it's humanly possible. And I do believe that we keep growing as long as we are here. And that's the beauty of this journey. But there is a special place where I have arrived just now. And before I dive in, because we, we actually have a very juicy, very special, very yummy subject today. But I wanted to give you a heads up that tomorrow I am involving you into my celebrations. And I want to expand this joy, this radiance, this love that I feel in my heart. I want to extend it. Uh, into our global field, into my community, my beautiful global community of all of you spread all over the globe. And over the weekend, I am creating this birthday sale celebration where you will have an opportunity to join most of my offerings at a very, very, very fun and exciting rate. So watch out, uh, some really big, <laughs> exciting opportunity is coming your way. Really happy to offer that and really it's an honor to celebrate like that together. So watch out for that. Tomorrow the whole party will start um, and uh, it will go on for just 48 hours. So today, I want to focus on um, on the the one thing in relationships in love because love and relationships has been one of the deepest explorations of my life. It's like ever since I was a little child, I was always fascinated by love and relationships, and um, so so much of my life has been dedicated in into really understanding and exploring what's the deepest place to meet as two human beings, what's the deepest way how, how we can find ourselves through being with another, how we can find the greatest truth, the greatest bliss of ourselves while being with another. Like I always felt that there is something magnificent that happens in the meeting of two people who are willing to open to love. And I want to I want to dive into that. I asked you what what's happening for you in your live life side. I created a, 
a poll in um, I ask you to ask me questions and I've created a poll in my stories and so many of you responded that there is a lot of challenges that you are navigating and it's a challenging time in your love life and many are looking to attract a beloved many are just facing a certain stage in their relationship which is which involves tension which involves questioning which, which involves inquiry and so I hope that this live really serves you and really serves the highest way of meeting between the masculine and the feminine. So many of you asked questions and I will involve some of these questions into what I'm about to talk about. And you have asked, uh, many people asked, how do I stop this, this pattern of attracting unavailable people? How do I stop being so needy and grasping? And that's an amazing awareness, by the way, when you recognize that. But there may be a misunderstanding of what it, it truly means in the deepest level. More on this coming. How you ask how to approach different levels of consciousness in a relationship. What if I am doing so much work and my partner is not doing so much work? How do I approach that? How do I, is there, is there a chance for us to come on the same level? Love that question. I will, I will touch on that. Um, many of you asked about how to bring passion and spark back to a relationship when there's so much love, but you more feel, start to feel like siblings rather than uh, romantic partners. Um, and uh, there were other other beautiful questions. Lots of people asked about breakups and how to heal a broken heart, and also how to navigate when your partner is just being really angry all the time. Like no matter what you do, the, you just get get hit by anger and dissatisfaction of your partner. So I will weave, weave a lot of that into into this conversation today. And also in the coming days, there will be more, more, I, I prepared more content for you that's coming up it, as we are approaching really, really, really beautiful events that I have coming up. There's something so exquisite that, that I'm birthing right now. So we're also celebrating the beginning of that together. I'll mention about those things also in the end of the life. So stick around. <sighs> so I... I have, I am finding myself right now in a place of my relationship where honestly, I, I, even when I was dreaming, when I was younger and I was dreaming of how it can be in a relationship, I actually couldn't even dream to the place where I'm at right now. So it's, it's beyond my dreams quite literally. And, um, and it's, it's blowing my mind. And at the same time, I see the exact things that I did to create that in my life. And I know that there were times in my life when I felt so hopeless and I was questioning the whole relationship thing. I was like questioning, is it even for me? Maybe it's just not for me. Like, because it's, well, there was so much pain and so much struggle. And I kept having uh, relationships with people who either I was not so attracted to or I would be so attracted to someone and they would just not be meeting me on the level of depth that I wanted to be met and there was just those like constant polarities that were going on in relationships that were just like there was a mismatch there was a, just a, like sometimes I can I remember like writing poetry even about that like feeling that between me and my partner there is like a glass and I can speak to him but the, through the glass it's like you know this kind of glass where, where also it, it you cannot hear through it it's like you can only see the person but you don't hear them so sometimes I, I had a feeling that I am talking and he is there and he can see me and I can see him but he just like there's just a wall between us there's a glass wall between us and it just doesn't reach whatever I feel, whatever I experience, how much I love him, what I wanted to give to him, how I wanted to create our relationship and the beauty between us. And there was just like, it was just bouncing against that glass wall. And, um, and I remember feeling this, my heart was breaking with the feeling that, that I have everything for us. I, I have so much love. Like I, I can, I have, like it doesn't even matter that you cannot access the depth of your love. Like I know I have so much love. It's enough for both of us. It's actually enough for the whole world. 
And uh, yeah, so there were situations like this and uh, I know very, very well how it feels to try to make things work and really give all of myself into it. And when I say, like from my standpoint, when I say give all of myself, it means give all. Like it means like I really, I looked at all the ways where I am betraying myself, where I I am being too demanding, too uh, entitled, too unforgiving and like all those things. Like I looked at all of that and I really tried to make it work and I still didn't. And hence comes comes a big learning that I've learned and that I'm so grateful for because I can I have so much compassion and empathy for people who are going through something similar. And that's what I know that true love you cannot make it work. True love is it's either there or it's not. And true relationships, like those relationships of really high caliber, which I believe that people in my community are ready for, people like you are ready for. This kind of love, this kind of relationship, you cannot for force it. You cannot push it. It cannot happen from you compromising yourself. It cannot happen from you saying yes to behaviors that just does, don't, do not feel right in your heart. This deep, deep love you're craving does not happen from abandoning yourself. Does not happen from feeling like, okay, well, you know, it's time for me. Like, I want to have a family. Like, I may as well just stay with this person because, like, there's, we love each other. There's nice chemistry between us. But I just don't feel cherished and I don't feel treated well. And, and I feel like I am compromising on so many of my dreams, just trying to stay here, trying to make it work. It's, it's not how it's gonna happen. And I know how much it hurts. I know how much it breaks your heart. If you really feel, if you really genuinely feel that this is the person for you, that this is, what, like you pour so much of yourself into it and then there's just, it, there's just no meeting. You give yourself, you give yourself, you give, you put in yourself totally and that's what, by all means, I always recommend this, to go in with totality. But once you really go with totality and there is no meeting, then you deserve better. Then you deserve to come back to self-worth. And remember how precious you are, how lovable you are. You are the beloved child of the divine. You are the beautiful being, the beautiful flower, the beautiful miracle that incarnated into this shape. You deserve all the love, all the pleasure, all the bliss, all the joy on this planet. So, and you know it, you know, it's the, that's the thing that... There is a flavor that no one can tell you. I cannot tell you, ah, this relationship is not going to work. Like, I never would ever in my life do something like that. I always, if, if whenever I, if I'm faced with that with my clients and they're like, oh, this relationship cannot work. I always try to find ways how it can make work, how we can make it work, how, what you can learn from it, how you can align yourself, how you can really become truly yourself. And that will be mirrored to you by the universe, by your beloved, by love. And yet, when people really anchor into, into their self-worth and they really start to hear this voice inside, this voice that tells you exactly when you are betraying yourself, exactly. And this is not an ego game. This is not your little entitled game or where are the conscious men or another unconscious man. It's not that. In It's normal to have questions in a relationship. It's normal to check how is that? Like, is, is it really real? Can we really go deeper together? Like, it's normal to question those kind of things. I had a phase in my current relationship, which is as I said, beyond my wildest dreams, there was a phase when I've questioned the whole thing. And 
I question whether we can go deeper, whether we can meet on a very deep level. So it's normal to have the questions. And the questions don't mean that you have to run away. Not at all. But the questions mean that you have to look deeper. And you have to, have to get more honest with yourself. With what do you really want? What are you, is your soul really here for? What kind of love are you really yearning for? And you will know it inside. And you will know when it's just off and you're just walking over yourself. And you will know because you will see that you're spiraling down. You're having less and less self-worth. You're having less and less confidence. You're feeling less and worse and worse about yourself. You're feeling less and less connected to your heart. You're feeling less and less open, less and less soft. This, is, this means you're spiraling down away from yourself. In a relationship which is, which is based on true love, you will always spiral up. There may be dips. It's very normal. It's like we're humans, you know. We're humans. We will have dips, energetic dips, dips emotional dips. Like we will have karmas coming up, patterns coming up. Like it's, it's a normal part of human life. And it's a normal part of relationships. But still, overall, you will be able to, to see whether you are spiraling up and whether your heart softens more, whether your heart opens more, whether you're becoming more and more true to you, to the depths of you, or you're moving away from that. You will know that, and that's all you need to know. It's not in a matter of days, hours, or weeks. We know this, this whole thing of drama, like something didn't go so right, and then you're questioning the whole relationship, and you forgot completely about all the beauty, all the love that happened over the last weeks and months and years. And this is drama. Let's be very clear. <laughs> so I am naming it as it is. This is drama. You will get to differentiate the drama, the ego dance, the e your ego like screaming and like your ego trying to find someone to rescue you. And also someone asked about the really the avoidant and anxious attachment styles in relationships and this is a very beautiful thing to study and to learn and to understand especially if you're having those lots of roller coaster rides in relationship definitely look into that and uh, and this is the, the game of the ego yeah this is the ge the battle of the egos where especially you come together with an anxious and avoidant attachment style related par patterns in in like in the couple Oh my God, <laughs> get ready for a hell of a roller coaster ride. Get ready for a very juicy, passionate sex. Get ready for incredibly, like, heart bursting love and just bliss and ecstasy. And then incredibly low downs where you're like, oh my God, how did I end up here? Like, just trying to collect yourself from the tiles on your kitchen floor. Ah, <sighs> yeah, so this will be like ego games, karmic games, where you are purifying something, you are together not to create something, you are here to heal something. And that's actually really beautiful and really important. Many relationships are designed and many people are coming together in order to heal, not to build, not to create together. And this is very important. It also can shift. Yeah, it can be that there is a, a karmic dynamic in a relationship and it can shift. I've seen it so many times. It's incredible. <laughs> really, like my clients are shifting their relationships just like at the speed of light. It's, it's amazing that it really happens like that, especially in those long-term relationships. Very often they're coming together because they recognize, oh, you have tendencies just like my caregivers, just like my par parents had. You are exactly... You're behaving exactly like my par parents. Like, for example, if you're feeling really emotional and really triggered, and then it's exactly the moment when your partner needs to go away. And you're like, <sighs> I hate it. On one level, and on another level, you're like, ah, oh, that feels like home. And then you stay there, and you stay there, and you spiral, and you spiral, and you spiral. But in fact, what's happening is that it's exactly what your parents used to do that they wouldn't be emotionally available when you needed to be held. 
and that just reminds you of that. And that there are so many relationships that are based on that. Yeah, or another, yeah, emo being emotionally abusive, yeah, where one partner just, you know, if something goes wrong, then they just pull out all their weapons and just get start to get super emotionally abusive and crossing all the boundaries and unleashing emotionality and blame and criticism and judgment. And actually that's coming from a place of insecurity and anxiety that the other partner may leave. And so they're trying to grasp to catch somehow with emotional manipulation or with neediness, excessive neediness, needing attention, needing validation, needing reassurance. And then that also may feel like, oh my God, I hate it. But then on the other hand, it may feel like, like love, like home, because that's also how you saw your partners. So those kind of things, like you need to be able to differentiate them. Okay, this is ego games and this is something I can move through and I can heal it and I can empower myself through that actually. And this is beautiful yeah, because we need to face those things because even if you change a partner, it's not going to change. The other partner will come and they will have exact same thing. And you will be like, this reminds me of something. Yeah, one day, if you wake up yeah, in the middle of it. Or if not, then you will just have the serial monogamy, which is actually like more like a polyamory. It's like you have, <laughs> you know, you have one relationship, you break up, and another relationship, you break up, and another, and it's like this one relationship after another, which actually is actually like you're having a polyamory. You're just, you know, having so many people in your field because you're constantly changing partners. Um, but... If you are here for something magnificent, then you have to get out of those loops. You have to get out of those loops. And here is the key for this whole thing. And here is the key to really, first of all, to actually be attractive to a love of a really high caliber. And secondly, because that's not enough, because some people really are good at attracting, but they're not good at keeping relationships. And so on one hand, this is the thing that makes you attract that kind of caliber that you want. And secondly, that's what makes you maintain that relationship. And that's one thing. Yeah, ready? I wonder if you can guess. Do you, do you know? What would you think? What is that one thing that really makes you magnetic to a lot of a really high caliber? And that's the exact same thing that makes you sustain that high frequency relationship and go deeper and deeper and transform this relationship into a meeting of two sovereign beings. And that's exactly that same thing that makes you then merge into something even greater. What do you guys think? Self-love. Self-love is part of it. Okay. Many people say self-love, so self-love does not just come, actually. Self-love is a product of something, because if you're just trying to love yourself, it, you may have tried and may just not last. Okay, authenticity, honesty, respect, okay, that, that also comes with that thing. <laughs> okay. I will tell you, it's devotion. It's devotion. It's devotion, which means love for the divine and also letting yourself be loved by the divine and remembering yourself as the divine. And from here, Presence comes, depth comes, self-love comes, respect comes, deep seeing, deep recognition comes from devotion. From your capacity to soften your heart so much, so you start to feel God. And when you do so, you start to recognize God everywhere in everyone and there's no other choice but love and love so deeply love so profoundly that you turn into love you become love 
you remember yourself as love. And just your very being reminds others of love. <sighs> this means, you know, when you find this depth of love in yourself, that means that you will have to say no a lot. Because sometimes we associate, we think that love is, is about being all-embracing, all-accepting. And yes, it is. But in all-embracing, all-acceptance, there's also a lot of space for no, for clarity, for boundaries that are serving love. Your whole being turns into a conduit and a servant for love. Your whole life becomes about love. And that's how you transcend the games of your ego. And that's how you transcend all those wounds and karmic patterns and anxious avoidant relationship and trying to push, to prove, to manipulate, to, to show them that you are worthy, that you deserve. And, you know, trying to claim your space under the sun in this paradise. You are made of paradise. You don't need to claim your space here. You are a paradise. When you remember that, you will have to let your heart crack. You will have to let that protection those walls that you build around your heart, which make you battle with others and which make you battle with yourself and be in this eternal fight with yourself, trying to make yourself better, trying to make yourself more lovable, trying to make yourself more pretty, trying to make yourself more something. This comes from forgetfulness. This comes from forgetting the one you actually are. But... Remembering God, remembering devotion, it means that your heart will be raw. There will be a lot of vulnerability. And that's the price to pay for true love. Your vulnerability. And it's so scary. And I feel you so deeply. It is so scary to let yourself show yourself unpolished, raw in confusion, in not knowing. It's so scary because you've been hurt so many times, because you've been dropped when you let your guard soften and when you softened yourself so deeply and you leaned back and there was no one to catch you and that hurt so much. That's why it's so scary to open again. That's why you may not Sometimes recognize that there is this conscious, powerful human being right in front of you. Actually, in, in fact, in everyone who surrounds you, everyone who is somehow in your field, they have this conscious, deep place in them that you are yearning for. And that's the place from where you can meet each other. And there's no mistake in who your partner is, beloved. I really want the whole world to hear that because... As long as we are blaming the other, as long as we are judging the other, as long as we are not accepting the other the way they are, in the divinity that they are, as long as we cannot respect the God that is in front of us, within this very human being, as long as we cannot see that, as long as we can't, did not peel our eyes, and as long as we didn't drop that glass wall that separates us from the other. And that only drops when you remember yourself. Yeah. Then we will keep blaming others. We will keep saying that, well, this is a relationship. That this person is less conscious than this person. And, and uh, this person is just starting to do their work. And, and, and I have been doing my work for so long. There's no such thing. Forget this. Forget this. If this person is in your life, it means there is a meeting. He is your reciprocal. She is your reciprocal. You are 
attracting each other because you are a match for each other, because you are aligned with each other. And maybe you don't like this alignment. Well, then you have to turn inwards and see why you are aligning with that. And that's the work. Yeah, that's the work that you turn inwards and you drop into the sacred union within yourself. And you discover, and that was a very specific moment that happened for me, actually, and that's what pivoted my whole relationship. That, first of all, I realized that my partner will never give me what I wanted. <laughs> Isn't that the paradox? We keep looking for partners who will give us everything we want. And then actually for me, there and for so many of my clients, that was exactly the pivot that we recognize that our partner will never give us all that we want. Here we become adults. <laughs> Finally, this is where maturity begins, where you realize that no human being, no human being will give you everything that you want. It's impossible. It's impossible. Forget it. Just forget it. It's impossible. It will never happen. Because there's only, you can source everything you want from only one place. Only one place. And this is not the other person. And as long as you are going around and around the world looking for this one person who will finally be the person for you and will give you everything you've ever wanted and yes, this is the one and we are so perfect and yes. As long as you're doing that, you are hurting yourself and you're keeping yourself so far away from love. And that one thing that can give you all is the divine. It's God. And the more, most interesting thing of it all is that you will keep searching and you will keep complaining that there is no right person for you and that you are unlucky and you will be doubting maybe, maybe I should just quit this whole relationship game and, and you know, create a whole drama out of it. Like, oh, it's not for me, you know, I already missed my chance or it's, you know, for others, it's for those, you know, they're younger, they are, you know, pretty and, you know, maybe they are wealthy and that's why they have it or whatever fantasies you've created for yourself, all of that is not true. What is true is that you will keep searching until you find God inside of you. And seriously, there's no way around that. Other people may call it differently. I love the word God. I love all words that represent that, that limitless, that eternal, that depth of all, the bliss, the essence of bliss, the essence of consciousness. I love all the words that represent that. I love it. You may not like this word, doesn't matter. It doesn't separate us one bit. We're still the same. <laughs> You're still just as godly as I am. Doesn't matter if you don't like this word. You can say universe, you can say goddess, you can say the divine. It's all the same thing. Once you remember that, and this remembrance is not even so... You, can, you cannot even find it anywhere. <laughs> Because it's inside of you. <laughs> it's inside of you, my love. It's inside of you. And this transformation doesn't take long. Because lots of people think, oh, I need to... Because I spent a lot of time with yogis and meditators, and I was also one of them. And I'm still a yogi and a meditator. But there is like a certain fashion to search for enlightenment, to push for enlightenment as if it's somewhere to be found. It's right here, it's inside of you, it will never leave, it has never been apart from you. It's right here. It's 
So once you find that, and that, so that that was the, the moment that it dropped. Even though I had intellectual and even experiential, ex like direct, prolonged experiences, I still was, was looking for my partner to somehow adapt and be somehow, you know, able to meet me. Uh, but then I remembered, actually, he can never give me everything. Because I already have everything. Because it's the divine that gives me everything and more at all times, every moment of my existence, and it will never change. And so, your devotion changes you. Your devotion changes your relationship. In your devotion, you start to accept yourself as you are. And you start to accept the other exactly as they are. And it's impossible, it's absolutely impossible to have a healthy relationship without accepting the other. And it's absolutely impossible to accept the other before you've accepted yourself. And when you accept the divinity and the perfection of all there is, it's just, you know, it's just, you start to see it with more clarity and your relationship transforms and your relationship starts to go to a different level. It stops being a relationship where you both are searching for each other and searching for something. It becomes a meeting, a meeting of two whole and complete beings who have found the sacred union within themselves. And by the way, I, I am preparing some transmissions for you exactly on that and rituals where you get to stabilize into that where it's not just a becomes a passing experience but actually it's something that you drop into and rest into and stabilize into that's coming in my upcoming masterclass but the devotion and i will speak about it in the end but the devotion changes you it changes the relationship it changes your heart it changes your heart. It changes how you hold your heart. It changes how you love yourself. It changes how you love the other. It changes everything. It took me 20 years <laughs> to get here. <laughs> because as I said in the beginning of this life, I've been fascinated by relationships my whole entire life. And I've had so many relationships and so many different explorations of different forms of relationships and relationships which were supposed to be more free, <laughs> which in fact were not, but they were just running on, on some wounded patterns and, and so on, and, and very deep relationships where we really practiced together and looked for God together, but still could not find because we thought we had to search somewhere outside of ourselves. I've been in relationships which is completely not a match and completely we were just operating on, on different, we just wanted different things, we just needed different things and I was trying to make it work, I was trying to make it work, I was trying to make it work by manipulating somehow the external, yeah, by changing some, some of our dynamics, by becoming nicer to him, by becoming more accommodating, by opening my heart and holding him like a mama. And then that completely reversing the polarity and reversing the, the my joyful place to be. And polarity is a fascinating exploration because once you settle in your sacred union internally, then you recognize that you can actually empower one or the other polarity as you like and as it makes it juicy. And then to this question that came in so frequently, how to bring juiciness and spark and passion back into relationship. And I can tell you that your relationship is meant to become juicier and more passionate over time. Because over time you stabilize more and more into your sacred union. And over time you find more and more nuances of your feminine, of your masculine. And then in, you bring it to your meeting with another. You bring it to your meeting with your partner and that works like fireworks. It works on this magnetism that you are just like you polarize when you really allow yourself to occupy that feminine place and your partner 
if you're a woman and if you want to cultivate the feminine, obviously, and your partner, if they want to cultivate the masculine, they stabilize in their true place. And by the way, it doesn't even, it's not even gender specific. It's just a matter of choice and preference and, and happiness. And um, yeah, in that you, you cultivate passion and juiciness and spark, which never, ever goes away. And you always know how to ignite it. And that's what I'm experiencing in my relationship, that actually it just gets deeper and juicier and more fun and more exciting and more passionate with, with every moment. And it's a co consistent choice. And at the same time, it's not work. It doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like we are trying to make it work. It doesn't feel like we are making it work. It's just this yes in the heart. It's a yes in the heart. It's, a, it's an opening in the heart. It's a des desire in the heart. It's a trust in the heart. That's what makes it work. But it's always and always and always based on devotion, based on love for the divine, based on remembering love of the divine for you, based on remembering yourself as the divine. And then there comes this moment when a relationship, it turns into a meeting and then it turns into a sacred union. Not only the sacred union that's inside of you, a union, this union with the divine, but a sacred union between two people. And this is so fascinating. This is so fascinating. When two people find themselves in a, in a place of sacred union, the creation, how we manifest, it's, it goes to a completely different level. How you create your life goes to a completely different level. How you flow through life, how, like, like how much love you actually can channel if for, for those who are here to create, to be the conduits of love, we can do so much more when we are together. Because when we are together, there is more landing space for love, for the divine grace, for the divine bliss to flow through. So when we are together and we allow this third to be created, that union, which is more than the sum of the parts, and it's created out of this incredible devotion, out of this incredible care for your heart and for your partner's heart. In that tremendous love between these hearts and this tremendous choice of love above all, the union is born. And then you know, you are on a one-way road. And you are creating and manifesting and channeling and bringing truth and bringing love and bringing beauty and showing up for evolution of humankind. Because at a certain level of, of, of evolution, we cannot desire anything else but serve the evolution of humankind. And through sacred union, this is the portal for that. Sometimes people think, well, a relationship is distracting me from my soul work. Well, because you're, you're doing it not, not, not from devotion, because you're doing it as a, it's a means for healing. You're looking at it as a way to heal, not as a way to expand into the truth that you are. Then it will be draining. But in fact, there's nothing like a true, deep love, meeting, true love, true love from this place of totality and choice of each other and commitment. There's nothing like it that can amplify what your soul actually came here to do. Because everything gets accelerated, everything gets magnetized, everything gets amplified. Your creations get magnified. So, I'm looking at my notes, if I have something else to, to add here. But I think, I think that's been important. How is it for you guys? Did you receive something 
something precious for yourself here? Did you feel your heart was met? Did you feel that we, we went in deep? Was it important for you? So to just recap quickly, it's uh, it's all about coming back to the divine origin, to our divine origin. And that is what stabilizes you into so much truth inside of you. This is what stabilizes you in your heart. This is what, what makes you you. And this is where you find tremendous love and acceptance for you and therefore for the other as well. I'm so happy. <laughs> ah, you're so welcome, beautiful humans. And when this love opens between the two, then there's no limit. There's no limit how much we can create, how much we can unpack, how much we can open for ourselves, but also for the entire humanity. So this is an extraordinary journey and um, I would love to hold you and support you in, in that. So I will speak about my exquisite offering that's coming up. It's a completely new thing. I feel a completely new wildness and courage in what I am bringing forth for us. Um, since the creation of the temple, this incredible container, I feel there's more access for me to bring forth what I'm here to bring for my people. I feel there's more space for acceleration, more space for stabilization, more space for truth, for depth, for expansion and all, and all ways for us all. And so in my upcoming masterclass, Intimacy and Devotion, I will be holding transmissions and also rituals and we will have like this, there will be transmission and a ritual, a whole like one hour long ritual where you will be anchoring in the sacred union within and clarifying any of the outlived patterns, any of those things that had to be healed and that probably could have been a reason why you've been attracting relationships at all yeah it could be that you've been attracting relationship in order to help you heal but you may have been in certain loops and certain repetitive patterns so we're going to address those there in the master class in the ritual especially in the first ritual uh, on the sacred union within you will see that there will be shedding of old wounds happening and there will be a realigning and and stabilization in the wholeness in you. So this is such important work and we can accelerate this time because like it took me so many years, it took me 20 years to come to this place. And I know that it took me that long be because, I have to say this, <laughs> it took me that long, but it doesn't mean that it have to take you that long. This conscious deep work on relationship that doesn't have to take you so long because now we have access to those codes, to those ways, to those new paradigm patterns that can get installed in your system, especially in the ritual space. Because in the ritual space, we go to the level of the soul. We go to a level which is way faster than just trying to heal on this three-dimensional level, on this like, okay, I have a wound, let me heal it, let me look at it. There is a way to really um, to receive information top-down so that your soul aligns, your soul remembers its design and then it gets mirrored in your body. So that's what's happening in these rituals. So that's the first one. And then the second one will be about the sacred union in a couple. And that if you don't have a couple, you will work with your inner couple still, or you can work with the future beloved and changing the caliber of people that are coming in your field. And this is... Like I see this with all my clients that the caliber of people that are coming in their field now is like unlike anything 
they've experienced before because they allow themselves to really become true to themselves, really align with the truth and bliss and beauty that they are. And then who comes in the field is very different. And we will create a ritual specifically for that, for how, how to land that depth, that beauty, that wholeness in a union. So this will be magnificent. I am so excited about this. So we begin on Tuesday. You have a few days to join. I really, really encourage, if possible, to join live. It will be extraordinary to do those rituals live. But also if you're doing them in replay, it's okay. They still work because this work is beyond time and space. But I, like, if you're hearing this now, like, I really, really, really suggest very powerfully that if this theme resonates with you, there's nothing like it. It's very powerful. And then, so intimacy and devotion begins on Tuesday. And then afterwards, we are going, after a little break, we are going into a program, into my new program. We haven't been speaking about yet, so you're the first ones to hear about this. Into my new program where it's like there will be very, very, very deep work on anchoring the sacred union. And, cre- and manifesting and activating the eroticism and uh, finding how through erotic body, through our eroticism, through our life force, through our awakened energy body, how through that we are creating miracles upon miracles in our lives and how we accelerate manifestations and create a whole new paradigm on this planet. So extraordinary work I had. The link is in my bio. Um, I really, I would really love to to share this this with you, to go deeper with you. Uh, if that resonates, if you have any questions, welcome to DM me. And um, it's been a pleasure and a joy to spend this time with you. <sighs> I feel really full and really connected right now. And a little bit nervous and excited in my heart because I feel that this is such precious knowledge and such precious information that's coming through for us that I I wonder if it lands. I wonder if, if we are really ready to receive it. And I know we are, but yet there is this nervousness inside of me, which goes like, can we really handle it in the highest good, in the, for the highest benefit of all beings? Can we really, 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 do we really have the hearts to handle this with purity? So, mm, so I dedicate this, time with you, this experience to the divine, and uh, may this transmission that I just offered, and may it touch you deeply and activate the depths of your hearts and the divine in your hearts, and may it spread far and wide, and the ripples be powerful and potent, and may they create heaven on earth, and may May the divine be revealed within the hearts of all living beings. Thank you for being here. I love you.